Today I'm going to be showing you about this wood wall that was uh, inspired by Wrangler Star. Stay tuned. Now? No, not yet. I'll no. tell you when. Stay tuned. Hey, my name's Tracy. Thanks for tuning in and welcome to Farm Alarm. Today, like I said, I'm going to be showing you about this wall, this wood wall that uh, I had inspired uh, by Wrangler Star. And uh, he, if, if you watched his videos for any length of time about three years ago or so he made a wood wall and he had basically taken a bunch of small logs um, you know maybe three four inch logs all sorts of different sizes uh, made a depth gauge on his uh, chop saw cut a bunch of them up and he basically glued them and nailed them to the wall I thought that was really awesome and that took a lot of time and it would take a tremendous amount of time and logs um, to do this entire wall this is a pretty large wall and uh, it, was, it was basically a dream at that point. Um, one night, we had just moved in this place maybe four months, something like that. Um, we got a big uh, windstorm, lightning. Um, lightning hit a tree just outside, uh, just a few feet from our house, actually. An old uh, maple tree uh, had fell and landed right on my truck. Crunched the bed in, uh, basically totaled the truck out. I bought it back from the insurance company and drove it around. We called it the crunchy bed truck just because that bed had a huge dip in it. Um, anyway, so uh, I took that tree uh, to the Amish sawmill, the local Amish sawmill, and had them, uh, had them saw it up into lumber. I said I just wanted to saw it up uh, for uh, just to put it on my wall, you know. And they said that it wouldn't be too much money. And speaking of too much money, let me show you here uh, what they actually wrote on it. As you can see down here, they wrote twenty dollars in in a wax uh, a wax pen. They they wrote out twenty dollars, and I was like, man, that's pretty funny. I'm gonna leave that on here. It's a, down here in this corner, so you don't really ever see it. But it's pretty funny that they uh, you know that they wrote that on there. But the cool thing is they they cut this entire wall for me for twenty bucks. To me, I thought that's really cheap. They were fast. They got it done in like a day. When I took them the uh, the tree, actually it was two big logs, I, I had uh, sawed them in half, took them the logs and super awesome people, you know, I, I hauled them out there on my small trailer and here comes this team of horses, two horses, the dad, he backed up, they uh, put the hooks in it from the chains and you know, he's doing this, you know, whatever he was telling the horses, but them horses were smart, they were listening, uh, the Amish people have a real connection uh, with with uh, things such as horses and with the land. Uh, pretty cool people. So anyway, let me get to showing you what's on this wall. Oh, hold on, I actually have a special guest here. He's gonna show you a little bit about that. Come on in here, okay. Yeah, take it away, huh? Okay. All right, so I'm gonna tell you about this side of the wall and then he will tell you about the rest. So first off, we have this uh, little hatchet over here. Let me get right here. We got this hatchet that my grandpa gave me. Um, it's, I would just call it a replica. It's uh, to, to look like a tomahawk and somebody actually made it. And this is just a dowel rod. What I did was uh, I come in here and I put some grooves on the, on the handle where, where your uh, hand would go. And then I burnt it. Um, you know, I, I put a, a torch on it and I burnt it so it looked like it had a lot of wear on it then I just put some boiled linseed oil all over the whole thing and uh, put some bluing on the, uh, the the hatchet head itself or the tomahawk head itself and it, it's a pretty pretty neat little piece of course uh, it's not functional but it does look pretty awesome right here my favorite piece uh, which is the sawed off double barrel 12 gauge shotgun and actually non-functioning and uh, so the cool thing about that is, is it's just this section right here is just the only thing that's a real gun. Um, when I had bought it, I bought it from a gunsmith and he said that uh, over the years, I guess it, it kind of blew apart and you can see in here, there's some uh, brazing that was done to the gun and it's a really old piece. Um, it's a double barrel, double hammer, double trigger. And, uh, but these are not really shotgun barrels. This is actually uh, barrels, or not barrels, I'm sorry. This is pipes um, from Orsland's. It's just some, uh, oh, I believe it's probably a one inch 
uh, black iron pipe uh, that you would run for like gas, like propane or natural gas. And so I welded those on there and welded the whole gun together and sanded it all down and put some bluing agent on it. And it turned out really cool and it, it does look like a real gun. Of course it had an entire butt stock on it. I cut it down, it's a walnut stock. And this was part of that butt stock as well and I made that four end grip. Turned out looking really awesome. It looks like a real, uh, a real shotgun. And the real reason why I had made it was I was gonna make a shifter out of it. And uh, you know, this would be the shifter handle. And after I made it, I was like, man, I can't, I can't turn this into a shifter. That thing is awesome, man. No one would ever see it in the vehicle. I thought it would be super sweet hanging on the wall. And uh, okay, that's it. All right, I'm out of here. See ya. All right, sounds good. Hey, thanks for the help, man. Okay, so let's move on to the next piece. Actually, let's talk about that deer right over there. So that deer is a uh, 12 point, uh, thir wait, hold on, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's what I thought, 12, of course, 12. And uh, 12 point deer, and uh, we shot this on our property four, five, six years ago, I don't remember. Anyway, uh, it's really neat because I actually have pictures of this deer from the year before on our trail camera and my brother-in-law who hunts a little bit of ways from me also has the same deer on his his trail camera from the year before it's really cool because even the year before that rack looked almost identical it even had that little kicker right there at the top um, on the same rack i built the uh the arrowhead plaque that it's setting on i'll uh, show you that in a future video how to make those super easy uh, let's move on to the saw blade up here. The saw blade was actually uh, found in our yard, dug it up. Uh, I'm assuming it was probably my great grandpa's because we're living on uh, his, his place. He used to live here, but it was all rusty. Um, I soaked it in some uh, evapo rust, pretty good stuff, and it took the rust off, but it also kind of blackened it. And I thought, well, hey, that's kind of cool. Um, now what? Where do I, I looked high and low. I couldn't find any uh, any handles for it. You know, at, at like antique stores. Uh, you know, I could find some, but they were connected to saws, and I just didn't want to. Did not want to uh, spend the money just on those. So I went to Orsland's and I bought a, uh, a sledgehammer handle, uh, probably for like ten or twelve bucks, and I cut that dude in like thirds. And I took uh, one. You know, I put two of them on this on this uh, saw. And it turned out great. And uh, you can see that I, uh, I made a Maker's Mark stamp, a hot iron brand stamp. I used to uh, do, on our other channel, the Tracy Frederick channel, I used the intro of those vi uh, videos, I would stamp that into a piece of wood and it smoked and it fired, it was pretty cool. Um, so I'll show you more on that iron brand here in a couple videos from now. But uh, you can see that this, this ax itself, this double bit ax, uh, I also put that brand stamp that brand into the handle of that my grandpa gave me this axe and I thought man that's a pretty cool axe um, you know what can I do with it to kind of you know make it a keepsake so I sanded it down I polished it I sanded it you know probably uh, well first I ground off all the rust so I probably started off with somewhere around 100 grit you know step that up to 200 400 600 800 you know over a thousand ended up finishing it with 2000 grit sandpaper and then buffed it out and mirror finish and I probably did that probably four years ago and it hasn't rusted you know of course it just hangs in here on the wall but uh, you know I, I put boiled linseed oil on that handle and I, I wiped that head down just a little bit with linseed oil and you know you come in here every year and you know wipe it down a little bit and it, that thing will never rust as long as you kind of stay up on it and keep it oiled Next, I got this little lamp here, this lantern that my dad gave me probably 25 years ago. I have no idea what it is. Uh, I will be making a video on this thing. Uh, I'm sure with uh, the internet uh, these days, you know, somebody's going to show me what this is. It's pretty sweet. I know it's old as the hills. Um, the only marking that it has on it is a little uh, a Pyrex stamp that's on this globe. I'm sure you couldn't even find that globe if you tried. But one thing that really sets it apart is it does not take a standard like Coleman propane canister. It's going to take something that the size of a, about as round as a paint can, but uh, a little stubbier, a little shorter. So I would like to know what that is. Um, it, if you if you know what it is, leave a comment uh, below and uh, you know tell me what it is because I I'd sure like to find a uh, a fuel canister for it if they still make it. 
Okay, last but not least, let me show you this bobcat. I got this bobcat from my uh, from my stepfather. He uh, he took this. You know, it was problematic at his place, so I ended up getting the cat, and uh, I had a taxidermist here locally uh, named Travis Lane. He he did the uh, taxidermy work for me. Did an excellent job. It actually took me a very long time to decide who I was going to take it to because cats are extremely hard. Um, the faces, you know, to, to make it look real, uh, you know, you have to really do uh, due diligence on searching it out, you know, who you're going to have do do a cat's taxidermy work because uh, I've seen a whole lot of bad ones. Just Google search, uh, you know, bad taxidermy bobcat and, uh, you know, it, it, it's easy, easy to mess them up. You know, a lot of people can do deer, but there's not a lot that can do cats. I went down to the Missouri River, found all of this, uh, all of this driftwood and he put it all together it looks pretty cool he mounted it all on this uh, little piece of uh, barn wood here looking quite straight anyway uh, I think that's uh, I think that's it man I've been wanting to do this video for a long time and just never have taken the time to to put it out so I appreciate you watching hey thanks to my special guests that stopped by um, if you got any comments or questions Leave them below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe.